On this episode of Design to the Nines, we're going to be doing three trash to treasure projects that I hope you'll really enjoy. So let's get started. Welcome to Design to the Nines. I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome to my channel. I feel like I'm kind of buried behind stuff here, but I've got a lot of different things. I've had these orbs for many years. They just, I kind of used them in different decor things, and now they're kind of looking a little bit tired, but I think that there's a way that we can freshen this up. And then I've got some leftovers from other projects that I didn't use, like this pot was left over from my heart topiary tree. I was gonna make two, and then and I didn't make the second one. So this is kind of extra and leftover from that. And then you can see that I've used this um, foam before. And then I have this dowel leftover from a project. We are gonna be putting this together, giving these two orbs new life by turning them into a topiary tree. I picked these orbs up a couple of years ago at Ross. I believe that I paid about $5.99 to $6.99 per one, which is actually a really good deal. So we're gonna be able to put together this topiary tree for very affordable. I'm really excited about this. And so let's start assembling, just kind of as a refresher of how I put this pot together. So I bought this pot at Walmart for about $3-ish. It's just a simple black pot, it's plastic. And to give it a little bit more substance and make it look a little bit higher end than just a simple plastic pot, I put this base on. And what this base is made out of is a simple terracotta pot saucer. All I've done with this is painted it out in a black chalk paint to kind of match the black that was existing from the plastic pot. And then I glued it together with some hot glue and E6000. By adding this terracotta saucer, it adds a little bit more weight to the pot, which actually makes it a little bit sturdier, but also adds a little bit more of a decorative element that makes it look a little bit more finished. Then all I did was put in some foam that I had that I used from other projects. So if you have a few holes in some of your foam, go ahead and reuse it. You can reuse it and reuse it until like um, it's not functioning anymore. So then I have this wooden dowel. This is a one inch dowel that I picked up, I believe from Walmart for a dollar. Then I just took some antiquing wax and did a glaze over it. Rather than doing a stain, I just thought it would dry faster and, and get a similar look. And all we're gonna do is kind of just shove this down in the center of that foam and make sure that it's sturdy. Now, if you wanna add a little bit extra support, you could add a little bit of hot glue there, but if the foam is nice and solid and dense and you don't wiggle it around too much, it should hold in place pretty well. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to take one of our orbs and kind of find a hole in the center. And you should be able to slide it in through there. If you need to take some wire cutters or something to kind of clip it so that it can go through there, you want it to be kind of snug and so it doesn't easily slide down. then kind of position it in place and we're gonna take a drill. So you're gonna take kind of a smaller bit on it and then we're gonna drill a hole just above where you want the bottom to be. And then we're gonna slide some floral wire in there and kind of wrap that around and twist it so that it holds into place. And, and for a little added support, we can always add a little hot glue. I like to use my Sherbonder glue gun. It's really handy, it's cordless, and it's it makes it so you're not dealing with a cord, it's awesome. And then I use Gorilla Glue hot glue, so it has a really good adhesion. And then we're gonna repeat this process at the top, um, have a hole drill at the very top and just kind of wire that into place, maybe add a little bit of hot glue to just give it a little added stability.
Then to cover up the ugly foam, you're gonna just take some moss from the Dollar Tree and you're gonna just cover that up in the moss. You can use some wire or floral pins to kind of hold it in place or maybe use some hot glue to hold it in place. Um, so that will just be kind of up to you on what, how you want to approach that. And really that's it. I mean, if you want to kind of um, add a little bit of grapevine or moss on the dowel to just kind of give it more of like an aged or natural fill, feel free to do that. But what we end up with is a large topiary tree where we've invested, you know, probably even if we counted all of the the money that we paid years ago for it, less than 20 bucks when something like this would could easily run you a hundred bucks with you know without batting an eye maybe even more that's quite a significant savings yet yeah, a very classy and and finished and polished look so for my next trash to treasure upcycle i picked up this cedar chest this miniature cedar chest from a thrift store several months ago and i have just been going round and round on what i wanted to do with this because there's many different directions you could take this if you go onto pinterest there's like a ton of different ideas you could do for cedar chests and i just really didn't know it probably needs a little bit of a cleanup which we're going to do first i'm just going to do this project kind of as i go and see how it naturally evolves i think this is just one of those projects where you know it will kind of speak to you as you go but my base is is that I'm gonna paint the top and the bottom black and the handles that black in a black chalk paint and and then leave this in a natural wood finish and then add some kind of typography to kind of customize it and that will make it a really neat and special piece but this is like all cedar is beautiful this is something that can really store some meaningful mementos. It's a really nice piece. I paid $7.99 for it, which I thought was a fabulous deal for it being a cedar chest kind of piece. I start out by just painting the edge banding on the lid in a black chalk paint. I decided not to paint the entire lid because I decided to do an old fashioned logo on the top of the lid, which I will share with you in just a second. But I wanted to paint this edge banding a little bit of a contrasting color and also to kind of disguise the fact that it's a little damaged on the edge. Next I paint the bottom half including the legs and the handles and leave the middle cedar raw and exposed. I really wanted this to feel like an old-fashioned trunk and like it was always this way. So I found an image that I liked on graphicsfairy.com which I will leave the link for in the description box below. My first plan was to do this by hand using graphite paper to transfer the image and then paint the whole image right onto the box by hand. But then I quickly realized just how time consuming this would be, so I erased what I had transferred, leaving a blank slate. Now I do think this method could work very well, but I just wanted to speed up the process a little, so I just went ahead and made this into a stencil on my Cricut machine. I placed the stencil on the top of the lid, and then I took a makeup sponge and dabbed on the black chalk paint. And I didn't wait very long because the chalk paint dries rather quickly. And so I started peeling it back very shortly after it dried. And this ended up working out extremely well. Then I did a light sanding across the entire thing, kind of giving it a time-worn feel. And then I cleaned up any of the dust and I was extremely happy with this final result. For less than $10, I am just loving this antique looking piece, but I'm just curious, how would you have made over this piece? but we are in the middle of really loud thunderstorm. So if you hear that in the background, my apologies. It's quite the storm outside, but the show must go on. <laughs> so when we purchased this home, I inherited three mirrors. There it is again. Do you hear that thunder? <laughs> 
So I have these mirrors. They didn't cost me anything. They're pretty basic looking mirrors. There's nothing really special about it. And they're three different finishes. So I thought it would be actually really cool to make them over into like a window looking thing. So I picked up this trim a couple of months ago and it was on clearance for $1.79 for an eight foot piece. Now normally I think they're, yeah, I don't know, between five and seven dollars. So that was a significant savings and I picked up several pieces of it and I'm like, uh, I don't know what I can do with this, but it's, you know, pretty universal. So I'm sure I can come up with something. And so I thought that I could use this for that. So a couple of weeks ago, I picked up this really neat nifty tool there. It's like miter scissors and you can cut like different angles with it. And with this being as thin as it is, we don't even need a power tool to do this project. We can just use these handy little snippers and cut through and create a grid. So all we're gonna do is cut it down to size and we're gonna create a grid of four panels. So we're not gonna do six panels. We're gonna keep it pretty simple and just make it look like a window grid. And we're gonna take some E6000 and adhere it to the mirror. Then you're going to repeat this process on both sides, marking where you need to, the trim to fit into and gluing it down to the mirror. You may even want to use a little hot glue for instant stick. And then of course we're going to tape it all off, take it outside and spray it in a nice matte black. I'm going to make three of these. They're probably going to go into my guest room that I started a couple of months ago, but has since been kind of put on hold. So I'm hoping that that can be another piece of decor that goes into that room. So for me, it's just a, a couple of dollar investment in a little bit of trim and some spray paint. The mirrors again were free. And so a very affordable, inexpensive, yet when it's done and they're all three together, a really impactful statement thing that could add a little bit of light and reflection into the bedroom that they will be going into. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And until next time to all of my DIY Niners, bye.